Well, the day has arrived where the parts for this Cannondale M700 just arrived uh, late last week. And uh, sorry for the delay when I made the original video talking about what was wrong with the bike. I didn't know it would take quite that long to uh, get the parts in, so sorry about that. Uh, just to recap, um, this bike is just completely shot at this point. Um, both tires are completely flat. Not sure when the front one went flat. Uh, the back tire, I had a blowout actually, so it's pretty much toast. And part of the other inner, the other part of the inner tube got, ended up getting wrapped around the axle back there. And um, the gear train is completely worn as well too. You can see how wide these gear teeth are. And uh, same thing is true on the crank set, although not quite as bad. And, of course, the chain is completely worn. So, what I'm going to do is um, basically replace the entire drive chain and, of course, the uh, inner tubes and the tires as well, because they're pretty worn. So, pretty much a major rebuild of the bike. So, it's going to get a new crank, new chain, new cassette, and uh, new jockey gears, or derailleur gears. They're basically... Uh, pretty shot as well too. I don't want to use a new chain and everything and just have these old gears there. And um, these are the tires I'll be using. The uh, Continental Town and Country. A lot of the riding I do is actually on the road. So these will offer a little bit lower rolling resistance. I might get another set of um, rims and tires more that are more aggressive. I can swap in and out when I go off-road. And then I got a set of uh, thorn resistant pressed to valve tubes. And interestingly, they're made by Panasonic. I thought Panasonic just made consumer electronics, but apparently not. So it's going to be kind of cool to have Panasonic inner tubes. That's kind of wild. Um, and over here we have the new components. So we have. Uh, a new HG70 Hyperglide chain for the uh, 6, 7, and 8 speed. And it's important to get one for the right speed of cassette because the uh, more speed it has, uh, the, the spacing between the cassette gears is actually more close. And so that makes the chain more narrow. This chain is a little bit wider, so it's going to have a little bit more surface area, lasts a little bit longer. These guys right here are the uh, Derailleur idler gears, or some call them jockey gears, and that's what took so long for this order to come in. They generally don't sell these things separately, so that took a while. And then we have the new um, rear cassette, which is the HD50 7 speed cassette, which are getting kind of rare. Um, HD stands for Hyperglide, and I'm going to be running a uh, 1330. And Last but not least, we have the new crank set, the Campagnolo crank set, which is going to be running the, um, looks like uh, between uh, 30 and 52 teeth. This is the uh, Campagnolo race triple, and this guy by far was the most expensive piece. And this isn't the first time I've done this, you can see the sorted history of this thing. I also had Campagnola cranks on here as well too that went bad years ago. And of course the pedal that was totally shot. Original Dior LX pedals. And I've gone through not one, not two, but three rear cassettes. So the parts that are on here right now were put on in 2008. So it looks like a I end up doing this every four years. So basically the same kind of setup. So this will be the fourth time I've done this. And um, I think what I'll do is go ahead and start by um, pulling the chain off. And then I'll begin taking the pedals off. And then finally the uh, crank set. And um, Unlike automotive work, you'll need some special tools. This tool right here is for taking that chain out, and I'll show you how to use that in just a minute. 
Uh, of course, you got your standard, you know, Allen wrenches and rather large crescent wrench. Uh, this tool here is for getting the crank off. It's actually a made by Pedro's crank set puller. This threads into the outer threads, and this inner shaft turns, making this flat piece go out like that, and basically just locks that crankshaft right off of the square taper fitting. I've got a little bit of uh, anti-seize to use on the um, tapered fittings for the crank, as well as some um, lubricant I'm going to use for the chain. It's pretty good stuff there and I'll show you why. In fact, let me uh, spray some on this metal right there and I'll show you after that dries what happens. We'll come back to that. And uh, over here we have our tire spoons to take those tires off and change the tubes. And these two pieces with this breaker bar are going to be used to pull that rear cassette off. So this is kind of uh, goes around the gears of the cassette to hold the cassette still. And this special tool fits inside the cassette and grabs onto the retaining ring and loosens that up. So first let me show you how to get this chain off of here. These chains have what's called a master link and they're um, easy to identify. Just take some time if you look for the uh, round pin right there. You compare that to these others that are permanently attached, kind of riveted in. This one pin right here is the master link. And um, what this tool is going to do is just going to drive that pin out and split the chain open. And it's also going to drive the pin in when I put the new chain on. So let's get started with uh, the chain removal. Let me uh, mount the camera in such a way as you can see what's going on. This is one of those jobs where it would be really nice to have a cameraman. Kind of hard to do everything by yourself, but I'll try to zoom in as best I can. I'm, gonna, I'm focused right in on that master link, and we'll try to drive that guy out. Just want to center up that pin of the tool to the link in the chain. Get it where you want it and start turning. Drive it out. There it goes. Chain just released. We'll go ahead and thread that through. I think I might need to drive it out just a little more. Now we'll thread this chain through. And it just comes off like that. So hopefully you guys were able to see that tool in action. You'll see it again when I go to put the chain back on. There's where the master link was. And there's the little pin that was driven in. So that guy's no good anymore. Set that aside. Uh, now that our crank is free, we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the pedals. And it's good to do this when the crank is on the bike because you're going to need to use your your foot on the other side to hold this guy still. It's going to want to rotate. 
Now, one of the gotchas with this is, is the right pedal here, just held in by a, this fastener there, it's a right hand thread, so it's going to be counterclockwise to loosen. But um, when you look on this other side, uh, this is going to be a left hand thread, so it's going to be clockwise to loosen. So if you keep trying to turn that counterclockwise, you'll be trying a long time to get that pedal off of there. You can see how worn this crank set is, how many miles it's got on it. Pretty big dent right there for wear. So let's uh, use the uh, big crescent wrench next and get those pedals off. Those pedals are still in good shape, so I'm going to go ahead and reuse those. I'm going to start with the right side first. Now you want to just turn this one on the right side counterclockwise like you normally would. That sucker was real tight. It's because I ride in the water sometimes, you know, the water table gets real high and floods the street sometimes, and these pedals have been in the water a couple of times. So that's one. Well, actually, another old trick, I almost fell for it. You want to leave that pedal in there loose like that, because you're going to want to use the other foot to hold the crank still while you loosen the other pedal. Then we'll just take them off by hand. This one you want to go clockwise, so I think I might have to turn myself around here. These are always a pain. There it goes. A lot of corrosion in there, and that's what the uh, and I see this is going to be a four. You got dissimilar materials. You got cast iron, basically, or steel screwing into aluminum. So that sets up a corrosion process. And don't forget where the uh, which side the pedals are on. Okay, so now that we have the pedals free, we're gonna proceed to remove the crank. And to do that, you first have to take out this uh, Allen bolt and the surrounding protector. So let me put the camera back and uh, try to focus in on that. And I'll be able to show you how that tool works.
Now that we got that uh, outer ring off, you can see that's just a press fit. It's just square with a slightly tapered shaft. And this tool is going to thread in there just like that. Let me advance it a little bit. Just thread that on down like that. Then you're going to rotate that tool until the uh, inner shaft makes contact with the uh, outside of that taper. Now it's making contact. Now I'm going to have to use two hands. And uh, as you turn that clockwise, it's going to force the crank right off the shaft. I think I've used NICs on this shaft last time I did this in no way, but I'm not sure. We'll find out in a second. See how hard this thing is to get off. That wasn't bad at all. I did use NICs, thank goodness. So now we just take this tool back out. Keep our parts together, even though the crank is old. There might be some parts on here I want to use. And now we'll go ahead and do the same procedure on the other side. Just want to take that off. Maybe I could use one hand, I'm not sure. Yeah. That wasn't too tight. Doesn't take any force, really. Then the same drill as before, thread our tool in there. Get it tight enough, just so it makes contact. Okay, I'll go ahead and pull that off. All right, so now the crank set is completely removed. That wasn't so bad. And uh, while I have the opportunity, what you want to do is you want to check and see how this feels. Turn it around like that, see if there's any roughness. Move it back and forth, see if there's any play. And then try to move it in and out for lateral play. You just want to see what kind of condition the uh, bottom bracket's in or the uh, bearings inside of there. And this one's in very good shape. There's just no de detectable play in that. And you can see how that shaft is square and kind of tapers down toward the bottom. And what's on my finger is the NECs that I used last time. So that worked out really well. That protected the metal because this is steel. 
against aluminum and this would have been much harder to get off. You can see the rust in there. That would have been almost impossible to get off without the anti-seize. So let me go ahead and temporarily uh, turn the camera off, clean this up, put the anti-seize on there, and uh, prepare this uh, crank set for installation. And then uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the rear cassette and derailleur mechanism. Okay, I got uh, a little bit of anti seize compound on uh, both sides of the shaft. It's uh, that stuff over there. Same thing you use on spark plugs for cars. And um, checked all the parts that came with the crank. And by the way, these uh, bolts that came with the crank have Loctite on them, so that's nice. And got the crank set all prepared right over here, just checking it out to make sure all the parts are there. And uh, this is a 53 tooth ring gear on the outside versus the uh, 52 on that side. So I had to move this derailleur back and out of the way. I'm a little concerned about that, but not a whole lot. I'm hoping that that derailleur is going to have enough uh, range of motion to uh, move the chain up and down those three cogs effectively. We'll find out soon enough. Um, and basically, um, you don't need the, um, that special tool over there to get the crank on. You just need these bolts, because as this bolt gets tightened down, it's going to go ahead and grab the outer part of that crank and force it right up that taper. So you just want to make it good and snug. So let me uh, mount this camera back and uh, show you guys how that's done. Just want to make sure it's square on there first, so you drive it in nice and even. Basically, you just want to start tightening that up and just sort of walk this thing on up that shaft. Allen had sockets to be ideal for this, but I don't have any. Just want to tighten it good and snug. Right about like that. Okay, now we'll do the other side. Get this in a better position for you. This tripod I'm using sucks. And of course, you definitely want to make sure that these pedals go on 180 degrees out. It would be a pretty weird setup otherwise.
just like before, just keep tightening and you'll see it walk right up that shaft. You can use the longer crank arm for leverage instead of using the instead of tightening with the Allen key. That's good and snug. You can see those bearings are in good shape because that shaft just keeps wanting to turn and turn and turn. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, put NICs on those pedals and tighten the pedals down. So I'll be back in just a bit. Alright, I went ahead and uh, instead of applying NICs to the pedals, I just pl applied NICs to the uh, inner threads of the aluminum crank. And um, hopefully you haven't gotten the left and right pedals mixed up. And while you got the pedals off, it's a good idea to clean those threads. And also, just like on that bottom bracket, check for any kind of play in the in the bearings inside there to make sure your pedals are in good shape. And in this case, they are. So now we're ready to go back in with them. And what we're going to do is we'll we'll thread both pedals in by hand to get them started. And that way, uh, I can use my foot to hold it still while I torque it down. So this uh, pedal is actually marked right hand thread, so we'll go ahead and uh, thread that in clockwise for tighten. That went in there real good, that's bottomed out against the crankshaft. And uh, now we'll do the other side. This one's going to be counterclockwise to tighten down. Feels kind of weird doing it like that, but that's the way it works. This one's not going in quite as smooth. But that's okay, that's what we got a wrench for. It's in there good enough to use my foot to tighten down the other pedal with. These pedals don't have to be super tight. That's good enough. Having to do acrobatics around this bike to get to one side and then the other. One thing I want to be careful of with a wrench this big is not to gals that uh, nice new crank set. So just be careful and take your time.
All right, so basically, front part of the bike is done now. We got our new crank set put on. No scratches. Feels nice and smooth. Both the pedals are on nice and tight. I'm gonna have to uh, readjust that derailleur to accommodate the uh, larger rain gear. I didn't think there'd be that much of a difference between a 52 tooth and a 53 tooth, but apparently there is. And um, can't say enough about using the uh, NICs or uh, grease or oil or whatever you have on hand because uh, that made this job a whole lot easier to get this stuff off of here. I'd probably still be fighting with it right now if I hadn't done that. And um, don't worry, none of these, if you do this on your bike, none of these parts are going to come off. If your pedals start to get loose or come off, believe me, you'll know. And I've, I've never had that happen. So that's a, a good technique, especially if you're going to be riding off-road and get it into some water. Um, now what I'm going to have to do is uh, focus on this rear cassette. So let me go ahead and uh, get that tire off. And uh, tire comes off by just this quick release. And we have to get that brake undone. And uh, let me put the camera down for that. I think my brakes are too tight. Let me go ahead and uh, loosen them up and be right back. Now I got the wheel off. It didn't take too long. As soon as I turned the camera off and messed with it, it came right off. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the action here and show you how to get that uh, cassette off of there. First thing you want to do is uh, take out the skewer, that's what they call them. And it's just unscrews. And then it just uh, pulls out. I hope you guys were able to see at least most of that. This camera has like a 0 .005 micron viewing angle in all directions, unfortunately. Um, that tube actually got a little hot when it was wrapped around the axle like that. You can see some of the rubber cooked on there. I had to ride this thing about five miles to uh, get it back home with a blown tire, which is just so much fun. That's why I'm not going to use those tubes anymore. Just want to clean that up. These are actually new wheels, only about a year old. So these bearings are in really good shape and that's why I got this on a towel like this. I don't want to put nicks and scratches in it. Anyway, this is what the uh, rear cassette looks like and that's what that fastener looks like. And this tool makes very good sense now when you think about how they fit together. It just kind of locks in like that. But we need something to hold the rear cassette. And that's what this chain thing is for. So let me attempt to uh, focus in on that and show you guys how that comes off. They're usually on there pretty tight, so this might take some doing. So 
So you just want to wrap this uh, chain around until you can lock the gears in place. Now that we're locked in, go ahead and go counterclockwise with the uh, tool. And as you can see, it skips off. Part of the reason is because the gears are stripped, so it's hard for the tool even to get a good grip on there. There we go. That didn't come off without too much of a hassle. Go ahead and back that back off like that until it's all the way out. And there's what the tool looks like again. Let's see if I can give you the part number. I don't know if you can read that. Anyway. This just comes off like that. That's the retaining ring. You can see how that works. It's just got these knurled edges on there that grab onto it. The interesting thing about these cassettes is this last gear, the 13, is all by itself. And uh, it only goes on there one way, actually. One of these inner teeth is smaller than the other. And that's because that's part of the hyperglide system. So we just take that off. And this cassette should lift right on out. Right off the freewheel. So that's junk. And uh, good time to test the freewheel. You can see where the uh, torque's been applied. You can see little marks in there in the metal where the force has been applied to the free wheel. So we got no play there. What just came off here is actually a spacer because this uh, free wheel assembly can actually hold a nine speed cassette. So uh, let me get that all cleaned up and we'll go on with our brand new cassette finally. Okay, now I got the uh, wheel all cleaned up and um, I've actually added this uh, plastic piece to protect the uh, hub from grease that wasn't on there before when I do repairs like this I like to try to uh, make improvements where I can and if you notice there's a little arrow there pointing to a widened area on the freewheel on the hub and uh, that same triangle exists on the cassette. So this fits on there one way. You can see that uh, this region here is a little bit wider. So you want to make sure you get those lined up. Just like that. And it just drops in. And you can see the uh, spacer down in there. Because this is a 7 speed cassette. And we have some other components that we have to put on. Got to put this spacer here for the last gear. Make sure that's lined up with these notches. And then of course the gear. This is the uh, high speed gear. And you got to be able to find that notch. Let me try to find it real quick. I think it's right there. That just fits on there like that. And then now for the retainer. Go ahead and use the tool to tighten it down by hand. Just 
You can hear that locking in as you turn it. So, try to do this with uh, one hand here. Can't do that. Let me put the camera back and I'll show you how to tighten it. You don't need that tool anymore to go tighten because you're going to, with that free wheel. Just good and snug is all you need because you want to be able to get this thing back off in the future because I'll probably be doing this again in four years. Let me uh, go ahead and put those skewers back in. Finish this wheel up. Now I'll do the top side. Okay, so now what we have to do is uh, go ahead and uh, change the tire, which I was going to show you guys how to do, but uh, running out of tape. So most of you guys watching this, if you've gotten this far with me, you probably know how to change a tire. So let me go ahead and uh, change the tire while I got the wheel off, and then we'll go ahead and put the chain back on. Okay, now I got this uh, back wheel all built up. Got the uh, brand new tire put on it. All aired up and ready to go. Got the grease shield installed, rear cassette, the skewers. All ready to go on the bike. And uh, now I'll move on to the next phase. And that's to replace the uh, jockey gears, which you can see how wide they are compared to the new part. And uh, they're pretty easy to get out. You just uh, take out this Allen head there, and the pulley just goes ahead and slides on out. There's a little bit of a gotcha here, and that's why you always want to be real careful and look at all the parts that you have. The pulleys are different. This is a tension pulley, which there's nothing remarkable about. And then over here we have the guide pulley. Well, actually, the guide pulley is where there's nothing remarkable uh, remarkable about this one. You can see has a little bit of a weird cut on the gear, and they're also directional as well. So you just want to make sure that you get these pulleys in the right spot and there's no instructions with these by the way these are sealed bearings really nice I'm uh, gonna take a guess and say that's the tension pulley and that's the guide pulley because this thing actually goes like that and applies goes backwards and applies tension to the chain so let me go ahead and uh, get these gears off and uh, get the new ones on Okay, went ahead and got those uh, pulleys installed and got the wheel and tire assembly all mounted up. This thing's starting to look a lot more like a bike now. Um, um, there aren't any instructions with this uh, pulley kit, so I'm assuming that is the tension pulley and that that right there is the guide pulley. And this guy is directional, so you can see the little arrow right there. And so this guy basically turns in the same direction as the crankshaft. So I know I've got it in the right direction. The only thing I'm not quite clear on is if it's the tension pulley. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get
get that chain mounted on there. And then uh, let me thread that through and I'll uh, show you that how to use that tool to uh, attach the uh, master link together. Okay, now I've got the uh, new chain threaded through here. It's looking really good. And the uh, orientation is this way, kind of wraps around, goes through the uh, guide pulley, comes back, circles around the tension pulley, and then carries on to the uh, crank. And uh, here's our master link, where the two ends of the chain are put together. Just held in there very lightly. And I'm going to go ahead and use that tool to drive that link through and finish the job on the chain. I'll see if I can focus in better and uh, show you guys. So here's our tool we just want to use to carefully run that guide pulley through, or the uh, master link through, and you just want to make sure you do it evenly. It's slowly coming through. Each time it goes through a link it makes a little pop. And just drive it enough to be flush. You don't want the uh, end sticking out too much. Make sure it's still free. And that's what it looks like right there. So now, the uh, build up is basically complete. I've got all the components put on. But um, I'm going to have to readjust everything. I'm going to have to readjust that rear derailleur, the tension on the cable, and um, also readjust this front derailleur that I had to loosen up to accommodate the uh, larger chain ring when I put the uh, crank assembly on there. And then of course replace the uh, front tube and tire. And then this thing will be good to go. I uh, want to make a video about the adjustment of the uh, derailleur and everything. Let me see how uh, much tape I have left and I'll give you a few pointers about that. Oh, the carnage. So, I've added one more to the list, that old crank set. So now i got two old crank sets, and of course, all the old components that came off the bike. So this uh, junk pile just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I don't think this inner tube is going to hold much air. But anyway, here's the uh, final product. All complete. And uh, got the uh, chain all nice and lubed up and ran it through all the gears with the uh, metal protector and uh, motorcycle chain lube. It's also one of the things it's good for. And the reason is, I sprayed it on this piece of metal earlier. You can kind of see where it got sprayed. It's kind of a tacky, waxy type of substance after it dries and it's a good good lubricant good dry film lubricant so um, just a couple of things um, when you're picking your own components I mean yeah you could go buy a new bike at 
Walmart or Sears or something like that, but you're not going to get the, the same quality of the frame and you're not going to be able to uh, choose your components and also the uh, gear ratios that you like. And uh, when you're choosing components, um, what you want to do to minimize wear and friction is whatever gear you tend to ride in the most, you want to make sure that you're dead on that that chain is basically as straight as it can be where you don't have the chain all the way back there on the back cog and then all the way toward the front on the on the front crank where you have the the chain riding at an angle that's going to cause a lot of wear so when you choose your your cassettes and uh, your cranks just make sure that your favorite gear keeps that chain in perfect alignment um, because I've made uh, a lot of changes to the bike. I've disturbed all the adjustments. Um, there's basically three things you have to look out for on this uh, rear derailleur. One of them, or actually two of them, you can sort of see um, an H there and an L there. These two screws adjust the stop points low and high like that to keep the uh, derailleur cage in perfect alignment with the chain and the uh, cog so you want to put it in the lowest gear adjust the low setting then move to the highest gear and adjust the high setting and that will um, adjust your range um, a lot of times that gets out of adjustment when that happens the chain is kind of between two cogs and you'll get some skipping very similar to what uh, you heard on the first Cannondale video. The other adjustment you have to do is uh, the cable tension. This, the derailleur system is actually indexed with these older style thumb, shift, thumb shifters, which I like better because they're simpler. Not uh, quite as complicated as the rapid failure shifters but all the indexing takes place up there and what you want to do basically after you get the uh, high and low speed adjustments made down there is pull that back and turn this fit cable ferrule uh, back to apply tension. It'll actually move the cable cover backwards and apply tension on that cable to take the remaining slack out of it. I didn't have any problem with the front derailleur I did have to move this derailleur up to get the uh, larger chain ring cleared from that. You can see some of that lubricant stuck on there, nice and tenacious. Um, this is uh, basically all adjusted. Basically what you want to look out for is in the highest setting when you're on that larger chain ring, just make sure you have enough clearance between the uh, gear teeth and also when it's out like this that the chain basically rides in the middle. That way it's not rubbing on either side of the derailleur. I still need to do some adjusting and fine tuning on this rear derailleur to get it just right. It's skipping in some gears and uh, doesn't want to go to the bottom gear, the 13 of the 30. But um, I'll uh, spare you guys that. That's just going to be a lot of trial and error. So I just uh, walked you through the process. But anyway, I hope this video turned out good. I know it was a, a lot of jumping around and stopping and starting. It's kind of hard to do with uh, without a, a video helper, but uh, hopefully this will um, help you guys out. And uh, oh, one of the other things I wanted to mention is I try to make improvements when I do repairs like this. So one of the improvements I made was I got the um, puncture resistant inner tubes made by Panasonic and then of course I uh, installed this uh, plastic shield to keep all the grease from the cogs getting all over the spokes and everything just a few improvements here and there but now this thing basically is um, ready to go and I hope this helps you guys out if you wanted to build up a bike from scratch this basically was a rebuild of you know 60 to 70 percent of this bike the only other thing I would have to do is work on the brakes and the headset and front hub maybe and 
you have a whole new bike. So I hope this helps you guys.